your blood sugar could be wrong. Same meter, different readings. Yes, your blood sugar can be wrong. If you live with diabetes, pretty much any type of diabetes, being pre-diabetes, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, any kind, you probably prick your finger and measure your blood sugar with a glucometer. And that's likely with a bad boy looking something like this. If you live with diabetes and you're not measuring your blood sugars, you might want to start doing that as that is the only way of knowing where your blood sugars are at and if your management plan is actually working. Some measure their blood sugars daily, some measure them weekly or whatever your doctor might have recommended. And we should be able to rely on those readings to manage our diabetes. But unfortunately, those readings can be wrong. So let me show you what I mean by that and what you can do to get more accurate blood sugar readings. I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong and I have been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997. And for the first about 15 years of my diagnosis, I measured my blood sugars, I pricked my finger daily to help manage my blood sugars. Today I also have a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, that sends my blood sugar readings 24-7 to my phone. And that means that I don't do finger pricks every day, but before my CGM I used to prick my finger 10 to 12 times a day. And if you only rely on your glucometer, it has to be right, especially if you're managing your blood sugars with insulin. Unfortunately, it's not. And there could be several reasons for that. But don't just take my word for it. Let me show you. You can get different readings depending on how much blood you put in the test strip. So here I'm filling up the test strip, 116. Okay, now I'm gonna try putting on a little less blood, so not filling up the test strip completely. So you can see it here. And I'm, I was expecting a lower reading, but 129, it's different. Let's do another example. So these are the two meters uh, that I currently use. I don't love the big clunky one. This one is too large to bring with me on a day-to-day -day basis, but my insurance gives me those strips at no extra cost. And I then just pay for the strips for the smaller meter myself. And that's the meter I carry with me. And here we see it's just to compare the two. 99, 122. Not a huge difference, but so let's try and do another test. Okay, so see I'm using a different finger. There is a reason for that. Um, because not only does the two meters give me different readings, but I want you to pay attention here and actually see the readings that come out. Here we go, significantly higher. And that's actually because I had fruit juice on that finger. I have observed the same issue if I have a lotion on my hands. So what we just observed here were situations where different meters were giving different readings. I was also getting different readings depending on how much blood I put on the strip or how clean my hands were. I've also read that you can get different readings depending on whether or not you measure your blood sugar on your right hand or your left hand. That is not something I have observed, but something to be mindful of. But before we get all fired up and throw out the meters, call the manufacturer to complain, Let's just talk about why this can happen when it's okay that it happens, I know. And then I'll wrap up this video with some down-to-earth practical tips on how to get the most accurate blood sugar readings. Let's just start by talking about accuracy because when it comes to accuracy and glucometers, you and I might find it inaccurate when we see different readings from two different meters, but the reality is that they're actually considered accurate as long as those readings falls within a certain range. I might find that range too large, but there is a range. And also when it comes to accuracy, you cannot expect your glucometer to give you the same reading as you get in the lab. So let's say that you go to your doctor, they do a finger test in the office, they do a lab test there, you do a finger stick with your own meter and you get a different result. That is to be expected as in the lab, they measure your blood sugars in plasma and it's done in a controlled environment. So it's just, it's different. But let's go back to those accuracy ranges. So by the FDA, a meter is considered accurate or accurate enough if the meter reading falls within 15% plus minus of the lab value at least 95% of the time. And if it falls within 20% of the lab value at least 99% of the time. There's also an ISO guidance for glucometers, and that is that the glucose value should be plus minus 15 milligrams per deciliter 
from the lab value if glucose is below 100 milligrams per deciliter and they find it acceptable to have a plus minus 15 um, percent deviation if blood sugars are 100 or over. So the ISO and the FDA recommendations are very similar. However, it can be frustrating for some of us. I mean, I would give a different insulin dose for 140 milligrams per deciliter blood sugar than for 160 milligrams per deciliter blood sugar. So it'd be nice to have a smaller range. Aside from those 15 to 20% acceptable fluctuations, other things can also give you wrong blood sugar readings. Some of those things can be if you use expired test strips or if you take large amounts of C vitamin or Tyranol. So it's always a good idea to just look at your test strip packaging. It should have the expiration date. Also look if any substances will impact your blood sugar readings. As for the expired test strips, I must admit I have used expired test strips in the past without any issues, but I have also had some that had huge issues. So all of a sudden, if you start getting really wonky readings, check the expiration date. If you have a test solution come with your glucometer kit, you can always do a test and see if your meter and the test strips are actually giving you accurate readings. Fair enough, we now know that the meters are not always accurate or at least they're accurate within a range and that we probably won't get the same value as we'd get in the lab. But this is still really valuable information and honestly, it's something you can't be without if you live with diabetes. So let me show you some ways that you can increase the likelihood of getting an accurate blood sugar reading. So what can you do to get more accurate readings? Here are my three tips. My first tip, and I actually think that is the most important, is to always wash your hands and dry them. So wash them with soap, dry them, make sure your fingers are dry, and then measure your blood sugar. The second one is if you can, if you have enough strips, do more than one test. Do maybe two if they're fairly close, and then you just do an average. If they're far apart, do three and then triangulate, you know, find an average. And my third and final tip is always make sure that you have enough blood on your test strip. I rather press out like a larger blood drop than I actually need, fill out that strip and then dry it off with a piece of paper, then not putting on enough blood and not getting a good reading. So have you ever noticed that your blood sugars are off? Have you gotten different readings? Or maybe your blood sugars are always on point? Let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, please also give it a like. If you enjoy my content, if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell. That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.